is Bill Stern speaking to you from ringside at Convention Hall, Wildwood, New Jersey. Main event, wrestling. This is going to be a real grudge match. Both boys are out to win. The bell, and it's one fall to a finish. In white trunks, Lou Klein out of Detroit. Opposing him in the black trunks, Gene Dubuque of Brooklyn, New York. Klein takes over, and Dubuque goes under. Like the man said when he was ordering a hot dog. Give me the one on the bottom. I always root for the underdog. You gotta watch these fellas. They're a couple of quick change artists. There's a lot to wrestling that doesn't meet the eye. Some people refer to the game as the country's grunt and groan industry. You may be able to prove it by these boys before they're through. This is the kind of thing that stirs the blood. We come to the newest hold. Yes, I said hold. The forearm blow. No fair hitting on the break, Gene. They don't even do that in Brooklyn. Greeks had a word for it, but <laughs> these wrestlers don't seem to know they're Greek. Forearm blow to lose jawbone. Gene switches to a head and back arm lock. Buke can't seem to get a grip on himself, so he's getting one on Klein's chin. Not the forearm, but the blow behind it that counts. Wrestling is the only sport in which athletes take their own time out. Ouch! Just a little game of give and take. Now for a glimpse, Monsieur Dubuque. As a wrestler, he's giving a sincere performance. But from the way he's acting, this could be his last picture. Now that's what they call a head chancery and body flip in wrestling circles. And you can imagine what Klein is calling Dubuque. That is, if he can make himself heard in that headlock. Another flip. Klein becomes a flop. These wrestling matches are a lot like a crossword puzzle. <laughs> They're part horizontal and part vertical. No place for a man with a big head. The worm turned and Klein squirmed. Squirmed right out of it. Klein, as you can plainly see, is the party of the second part. Now, this kind of exercise can get a little rough on the sacroiliac. That is, if Klein happens to have one on him. Leapfrog. That used to be a kid's game. That's one way to drop in on a friend. You gotta hand it to the referee. He can get an aching back as well as the next fella. Can't we get acquainted is the story here. Time for a cooling out period. You can't blame him. The Buke appears to have a slight toothache. He'd like some instant relief, but he won't get it from Klein. Now they got a grip on each other. Dubuque gives Klein a bear hug. In fact, he's trying to squeeze the life out of Klein. <laughs> That's one way to put the squeeze on a friend. Is there a doctor in the house? There goes Klein's hairdo. And this is no place for a permanent. Keep an eye on Mr. Klein. Plenty of bounce to his house. Klein isn't the type to pull his weight, but he doesn't mind dropping it on an opponent. By this time, Dubuque must feel like an original canvas back. He's proving it, too. It's nice work. <laughs> they can have it. Saved by the referee. The referee tells Lou to keep on wrestling, but Gene says he don't get around much anymore. Time for a free kick. It costs Klein nothing. No fair, says the referee. Dubuque's head was offside. Sometimes I wonder what is fair in this wrestling game. You ask me, there's a lot of foul and not much fair. Dubuque's free again. He can surround Klein all right, but he's having trouble subduing him. Time for a little more wrestling with Dubuque taking the offensive. As far as Klein's concerned, he certainly is offensive. Besides, it's no fun getting your head in a scissors, particularly when the scissors doesn't belong to you. Duke's trying to win a hairline decision. He's one man who doesn't mind being accused of splitting hairs. 
One for the money and one for the jaw. They throw a lot of weight around, these fellas do. You got to have a good arm to throw in this league. Oh, it's just a little game of share the wealth. Now Klein does the flipping and Dubuque the flopping. Klein decides to give Monsieur Dubuque a finger wave. Pardon me, two finger waves. Lou sends his calling card. Gene's all tied up. Here's an original rope trick. They say if you give a wrestler enough rope, he'll hang himself. There's the so-called screen punch with the referee playing the part of the screen. Klein still pulling strings. The referee has a knotty problem. Who said no strings attached? Now for a game of leapfrog. This time the referee really is the third man in the game. Beware of Dubuque making peace. See? He wants to give Klein a fair shake. Yeah, I'll bet he does. The crowd's wise even if Klein isn't. Don't fall for it, they advise. They don't trust Dubuque. These wrestlers are used to getting a fair shake, but Klein isn't accepting any offers at the moment. Just as I thought. Klein didn't fall for it, but Dubuque did. He can't get away with that, can he, ref, cries Gene. So the referee tells Lou to take it easy. Hey, now Klein's threatening the referee. There's nothing sneaky about these boys, nothing much. Dubuque is now much more interested in catching his breath than his opponent. This game, it's catch as catch can, and you know he's dizzy whether he shows it or not. and it's back to the canvas again for Dubuque. He's taking this thing kneeling down. Time for an argument. May the best burp win. Customers don't know what to believe. Now it's Dubuque's turn. They're both getting a piece of the action, the boys say. Klein seems to be suffering from an old-fashioned ache in the stomach. The story of Goldilocks was never like this. It's possible Gene never read the story anyway, and as far as Lou's concerned, his locks aren't quite so golden anymore. Now, this is what's known as a fair exchange. One forearm for another. The boys are beginning to hit for real. This is where Klein proves he's a master of knee action. Two more downs for Dubuque, and he's still got 10 to go. Another knee, this time it's Klein who gets the action. Klein is counted out. The winner, Gene Dubuque of Brooklyn, USA. Proving once again that the knee is sometimes quicker than the...